The Sony FE 24mm f1.4 G Master Lens is a wide-angle prime lens released by Sony in October of 2018. And today, I'm going to be telling you guys why I think that this lens is still worth $1,300 almost four years later. So you guys ready? Wait, wait, wait. I bought this stupid thing. I'm going to use it at least once. Let's get to it. <laughs> So if you're wondering why I was holding the box and not the lens itself, it's because I'm recording on the lens itself right now. So if you're curious what a talking headpiece would look like through the 24mm G Master lens, drink it in. So I wanted to show you guys what it would look like to vlog on a Joby Gorillapod with the 24mm G Master lens. So this is what it's like. I'm being lit by a window right now. I'm not using a microphone because my microphone crapped out and started making a bunch of crappy, weird ass noises every time I move the camera. It's the Pixel M80. Don't buy that one. As I said, I traded in the 35mm Sigma lens and I wanted to get another Sigma lens and just a bunch of... It would be easier if I just show you what happened. Hello, how's it going? I'm looking for a lens. Thank you for choosing Camera Place where your savings account comes to die. How can I help you? What? Nothing. What do you want? Well, I have the Sigma 35mm f2, but I wanted something maybe a little bit quicker, like the Sigma 35mm f1.4 or the f1.2 version of the lens. Alright, buddy. Well, I don't have that lens. What I have is this lens right here. And this is the only wide-angle lens you're going to find in the state of New Jersey for Sony cameras. Well, you don't have the other lenses? Yeah. Well, COVID, they stopped producing glass. What lens is that? Look, it's 24 millimeters, it's f1.4, it's fast, it's everything that you were asking for, so... Is this a G Master lens? It's probably really expensive. Jesus Christ. This guy. Well, I mean, I... Look, just try it out. It's a G Master lens, so you probably can't afford it, but maybe you like it so much you make a bad decision, you take it home with you. I mean, I guess I could try it out. Yeah, you try it out, you little bitch. So the 24mm f1.4 is a prime lens, and what that means is that you can't zoom in or out with it, it's just one fixed focal length. If you're a beginner and you're wondering why that's a thing, it's generally accepted that prime lenses are a little bit sharper than their zoom lens counterparts. But that's not to say that there are no sharp zoom lenses out there, they're just generally a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, and a little bit more expensive than their prime counterparts. Oh my God. He needs some milk. This lens is f1.4 to f16, and that makes it the fastest lens that I've ever had since I bought a full-frame camera. And I gotta tell you, I am completely blown away by the results. Normally on the a7 III, most of the lenses that I buy are f2 and above. This is f1.4, and you can basically see in the dark with it. On the outside of the lens, you'll find all the things that you're used to. You have an aperture ring, you have a declicking switch, which means when you're spinning your aperture ring, normally there's like these little hard stops in there, which are like these little bumps that tell you where you're at on your aperture ring, but you can flip the declicking switch and that instantly makes it smooth through all the stops. You also have your standard autofocus manual focus switch, your focus ring, and a custom button, which is the standard with most Sony lenses. It's just a button on the side of the lens that you can customize to pretty much any setting that you want. I have it set to toggle Super 35 mode, so if I press the button, it just zooms into Super 35 or crop sensor mode, and then if I press it again, it zooms back out. While we're on the outside of this lens, you also have your focus ring, which feels super premium, which is to be expected on a G Master lens. It's also not acceleration driven, which means if you mark it in a certain spot and come back to that spot at different speeds, it'll always come back to the same focus point, which makes focus pulling in video super easy. This lens features a direct drive supersonic wave autofocus motor, which means absolutely nothing to people that don't design lenses, but in the real world, the autofocus is quick it's silent and it almost never misses. The only situations I found any problems with the autofocus where it would begin to hunt is when the aperture is almost all the way closed or the situation is almost pitch black. Other than that, the autofocus on this lens is near perfect. If you don't like looking greasy on camera, these little like bamboo grease sheets are a godsend. So at 24 millimeters, this lens has an 84 degree field of view. And basically it's just a really playful and fun focal length that you can use for a wide variety of applications. 
And don't get me wrong, it's not magic, it's still a 24 millimeter prime lens, so you're not gonna be shooting like sports photography or birding or anything like that on it, but for most applications that I find myself in, there's usually a place for this focal length. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that if I had a gun to my head and I had to pick just one lens that I have, it would probably still be the 24 millimeter. So the minimum focusing distance on this lens is 9.45 inches or 24 centimeters. And I really like that I can get right up on my subjects and still be able to focus on them. When I switched to full frame, it seemed like every lens I bought had a real long minimum focus distance as compared to my M50, with the Sigma 30 or the Sigma 56 millimeter lenses, which could get right up on my subjects. This lens has a 67 millimeter filter thread size, and I've actually bought two filters for it so far. The first is the Freewell Variable ND filter, but this is the non-mist edition. And the reason I got the non-mist edition is because the second filter that I bought is actually from Moment, and it's called the Cinebloom 20% Diffusion Filter. I got the idea to buy this lens from Terry Warfield, so shout out Terry Warfield, go check out his channel, it's awesome. And the logic behind buying these two separate instead of just getting the mist edition of a variable ND filter that Freewell or Polar Pro offers is because I wanted the ability to take the ND out of the equation if I wanted to. I'm actually planning on doing a video of all the filters that I own, so if you have any suggestions, leave it down in the comments and let me know what other filters I could add to my collection to put in my filter video. So the Sony FE 24mm f1.4 G Master comes in the box with a 67mm lens cap, a standard rear lens cap that you get with all Sony lenses, a tulip style lens hood which actually has a button release on it, it's not one of the screw on ones. The lens hood also has like a felt material inside of it instead of being all plastic. Some booklets, pluck them and file them. It also comes with this extra ass lens case and I, I don't really know what it's for, like I don't understand why you would need just a case for the lens lens itself if you can't fit the camera in the case as well. Like why would I just carry a lens with me with no camera? I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm missing the point here, but I just don't get why they include stuff like that and put so much effort into it. I get it, it's a G Master lens and they want it to look like super professional and stuff, but just like you're creating a lot of waste of like these cases that nobody's ever gonna use and it's just gonna end up in a landfill somewhere. Like just package it nicely and cut the cost by $50 and don't include that stupid case that nobody's ever gonna use. The case also has a strap that nobody's ever gonna use, but whatever, more e-waste, just keep dumping it in the ocean, who cares, right? We don't need sea turtles anymore. This lens has a one year warranty. I don't really know any more than that and I haven't looked. I don't know if Sony like will replace the lens or repair it. I should probably know since I'm recording a review of it, but I just don't know at this point and I don't really care either. It's not that I don't care because I'm like rich or something, I just don't care because the moment anything happens to this lens, like I drop my camera with this lens on it and they both break, I'm probably just gonna drive off the bridge, so. But anyway guys, I've been sitting here talking about the specs of this lens for way too long, so let's go look at some test footage. the 24 millimeter G Master lens is pretty expensive. It's $1,300, which is more money than I spent on my first car or my first camera and the first good lens I bought for it. So it's a huge investment, but it is just that, an investment. 
This is the type of lens that goes in your kit and stays in your kit because it's just that good. And that's not to say that this lens is without its flaws. The focus breathing is pretty obnoxious and it has made this weird rattling noise when I've adjusted the aperture ring at times. But other than that, I mean, I'm just not seeing a whole lot of compromises here. They say that lens design is all compromise, but I'm just not seeing it. It seems like the perfect lens at a semi-reasonable price. And another thing to consider is how versatile this lens is. You can use it for portraits, architecture, landscapes, astrophotography. It's a great street photography lens because it's so small and compact. And being that it's so small and compact, it's super easy to balance on a gimbal. So if I have my gimbal balanced for my Sigma 65 millimeter F2 lens, and then I throw the 24 millimeter G Master lens on the body and put it back on the gimbal, there's very slight adjustments that I need to make and it's still balanced. By the way, if you're looking for a really dense resource heavy review of this lens that involves like MTF charts and smart people stuff, let me point you over to Gerald Undone's channel. He actually used my intro joke in his last video, so I just wanted to give him that shout out. You're welcome, Gerald. Other than that, I just don't really have much else to say about this lens. It's a great lens. It's gonna be in my kit for a long time, and I'm super happy with it. It even made me better as a photographer and a video maker because once you have like the top of the line gear, you can't really blame anybody but yourself if your images suck. That's all I got for today. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Sam Has a Spending Problem, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.